Hello friends of Saab, uh, welcome back. I haven't posted a real video in a while, mainly because I've just been, um, well not doing anything, and just just driving and enjoying Morty here. I haven't tinkered with him, haven't done anything. Um, I did a little bit to the sunroof, if you watched my previous video, uh, I had a leak in the sunroof, but I just put a little bit of sealant in, checked a few things, uh, blew all of the drain holes out, um, and then it actually was all fine since then, so it's not looking too bad. Inside, um, in here we've got a little bit of the droop, on the headlining now um, and I've got some material which um, I'm going to use to replace that but that's for another day. Now I started this day off with the idea that uh, I was going to try and look at the overheating um, and I'm not going to call it an issue um, mainly because it's probably my issue more than anything else uh, that I feel it's just getting a little bit hot when sat in traffic or traffic jam which makes me nervous. I don't like being nervous so what I'm intending what I was intending to do I'll come around the other side because it'll be a lot easier for you to see was just to replace the uh, thermostat valve inside of here um, but when I took this off took the pipe out of the way just got to the bolts underneath in here to take them off but I've only got a diddly little uh, wrench spanner socket set um, and I haven't got the leverage to get that off it's, it's in there tight so uh, I've got a new spanner set coming and I'll come back to that another day what I am going to do this time I'll attempt to do is another workaround um, Again, not something that needs to be done. I don't think it's wrong with the car at all. It certainly isn't, because Dave, who I bought it off, is absolutely fantastic. I haven't got a word to say uh, bad against him and the engine he's put together, the gearbox he's put together, and the car in general. It's awesome. Probably more for my learning journey, getting to know the car a bit by, by replacing things or doing things to him that isn't, um, well, it is going to hopefully improve things or maybe my stress levels. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to insert a switch into the car that I can manually turn the radiator fan on. That way, if I'm in traffic and I'm overheating, well, I'm getting up to hot into the temperature gaze inside, I can manually switch the fan on. Um, and what I thought I'd do um, is very simply, well, the simplest way I can think of doing it is this is the temperature um, uh, uh, switch into the radiator, and it's got the two wires, as you can see, coming out, red and black. Now, if the ignition's on and you touch those together, the fan goes on very simple completing the circuit I thought so I thought, okay what if I take a spur off of here um, take two wires out and obviously complete the, the wires that go in as normal in there but take two extra ones off and then take those around the engine bay over the other side through here with all the other wires down through the gap in through where the wires meet in the back of the dashboard, pull it out the other side, inside the dashboard, because I have a spare buttonhole um, here uh, on this side. So I went, it was just had a blank in there when I went, I, I got the car. So I went online very uh, cheaply, just bought one. It's for recirculated air, but it's just a switch, works and then attach the wires to the back and then fan on, fan off manually. And the bonus with this, not doing it directly to the battery, is that because the um, switch, radiator switch, temperature radiator switch, is linked to the ignition, it's powered by the ignition, if I turn it, the fan on manually, but then forget to turn it off, and when I get out of the car and turn the car off, the fan will go off automatically because it's linked to the ignition power, not to the battery power. Uh, I have heard other people say they do it different ways, but they have to remember to turn it off, otherwise they could leave the car and the fan will keep going. Um, that's my intention, that's my idea. And then uh, I won't keep this switch, this was just a cheap one, um, to test the theory out really. What I'd like to do is get an extra one uh, just fit nicely but um, I didn't they're quite expensive uh, these are not um, this was about eight pounds or something like that 
um, in the UK and the, the extra switches. Uh, I put a message out on Facebook and uh, a couple of people said they thought they had one in a box um, but ultimately didn't. There's one for sale in from Germany. I can get a new one for sale from Germany for like £80, which is a lot of money for a, a switch. So I'll, I'll wait for somebody to find um, one in their box and put it on eBay or, or somewhere sub it and I'll, I'll, I'll grab one then. For the time being, it is. it's an identical switch. It just has something different written on the front. So that's my plan wire that up, put the wire through, pull it out there, and then insert that into the dashboard. Um, sounds easy enough. Uh, we'll see how we get on. So here we go. The wire is now fed through. Um, so uh, in order to do that, I didn't have to take any of the uh, under dash apart or anything like that. It was quite easy uh, with the trusty old wire coat hanger. Um, so I got the wire taped a bit of the, uh, to the wire to the end of the coat hanger put it in through that hole, uh, directed it very carefully and slowly through underneath um, and then Jane, my partner, kept an eye on, uh, I've actually just put the grommet back in, uh, but they've took the grommet out, kept an eye in there to see the wire coming through attached to the end of the coat hanger and then with a trusty old um, skewer, kitchen skewer we use for uh, kebabs with the hook end, popped it in grabbed it as she saw it, pulled it out, which meant it was out this side, which meant I could pull the wire through the rubber casing and out. Uh, and I've measured enough wire to go all the way round over to the switch over there. Now I will insulate the wire, uh, it's just there at the moment. Uh, it's insulated obviously with its, its natural casing, but I'll, I'll put some different casing on it uh, and try and maybe even put it into the trunking that's already there. But basically the system um, should now be in place, the wire is in place. All I would have to do is attach a couple of uh, um, uh, attachments to the end to put it onto the back of the switch and then uh, take a spur off over there. So that's where I am. My next job is then to uh, actually I'm going to go over there and I think put the ends on on that side now. Okay uh, this is what's happened. Uh, I've done Put these two wires together so i cut the wires um, from the uh, radiator switch temperature switch um, then got my wires added them in uh, what i did was um, i've taped it up i should have really looked beforehand but um, i've got little crimpers um, so i popped wires in either end obviously two wires in the top one one so from the engine going into this one one wire coming uh, to the connector which goes to the radiator switch and the other wire is the extra wire which is going across to my switch and the same for the other one. I've just taped them all up because I'm not overly sure about the crimpers, they're not great. If I had more time, if I will uh, when I get more time probably solder them but I just wanted to check in theory that this works. Um, so if I do that, so they're together basically now, if I go across and reconnect the battery because obviously whenever I'm doing electrical work I just disconnect the negative from the battery here so if I pop that back on and then go in the car so at the moment I've just got the wires coming out and I've just exposed two little areas here so we put the ignition on and then just touch if I touch these two bits together, if I put my camera between my knees, I'm sure this is how everyone does it. Yeah, let's focus on that. I cannot, but so if you can hear that, it's the fan on, fan off, fan on. So great, you in principle that's working. Super. So I'll go through now, um, reconnect the plugs back to the temperature switch for the radiator so that they still work. Then uh, I will line this properly, give it a proper route through and a path through, pull the excess wire off. And then finally, I will use get the little crimpers to attach the um, ends on this side. Struggling to lay up attach the ends to the wire on the inside and those will slot into the back of the switch and then the switch should turn the fan on. All going so uh, well so far. So here we go, all back in place. Um, you can see that I've 
insulated some of the uh, you know, the wire going through. I haven't done this bit yet, um, but the, the two connecting wires are back on the uh, temperature switch. The other wires I fed through the engine bay, going through over into the existing trunking that was there, over through the hull over there, which if I follow it around, comes out through the hole down and a bit of excess wire um, but then in through the wiring grommet into the back of the dash there as you come through that's then being wired to the my, that out of the way through my switch and if you listen fan comes on fan goes off um, and whilst there's eight little um, connectors on the back of this switch, um, I used red in position seven and black in position eight. There's also only two wires going in, but I have this eight for the original. So seven and eight, seven being red, eight being black, and, and that works. So that's it. Um, I've got now got a manual switch. Should I feel in traffic that? Maybe uh, it's getting a bit close to the uh, heat. Um, again, no, uh, uh, nothing against uh, Dave. Um, and Dave has said that it's probably me that, rather than the car. And that's true. Lots of other people have said that in the forums as well and, and, and totally get it. With my peace of mind, I now have a little bit of manual override should I want it. Now, if you haven't watched any of my videos before. I'm, I'm not an expert. Um, I say I love Saabs. Um, this is my dream Saab 900 and I'm just trying to learn as I go along. So if I've done something here you think really stupid, why has he done that or that's just a, really not a, a very good way of doing it or something detrimental even that I've done. I, I really would like to know. I, I want to learn. I want to do things better. So if anyone out there has a, a better way of doing it or the way that I've done it is not good Everything I've done is reversible. I can take everything back to how it was. That's that's the point. I wasn't too worried about giving it a go. Anyway, I look forward to your comments. Thanks again for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed uh, this one. Take care. I'll see you next time. So a little extra to finish. I mentioned at the beginning that I thought that connecting the two wires would mean from the uh, uh, radiator switch that would mean it wouldn't work with the ignition is off. And I got that because in the Bentley manual and also the Haynes manual, it says to test the radiator thermostat switch. When the ignition is on, short the two wires with a screwdriver across the two points and then the fan will start. So I thought because it said the ignition needed to be on, then actually because this switch is taken from a spur in the same uh, system, then also the ignition would be on. But actually, the ignition is off here. I've got no, no keys in the ignition there. It's off, and when I turn that on, the fan does start. So that's fine. I don't mind that. I just have to remember to um, make sure that I turn that off, should I turn it ever turn it on, before I leave or walk away. Um, I just want to double check. Does anyone know if, the, obviously, the switch is doing its job, so the switch could turn the radiator fan on automatically, as it should do, um, and often that can continue the fan after you stopped the car and turn the ignition off, you know, to keep cooling the engine to a certain point. I don't know how long it stays on for. I'm just checking, has what I've done, is it still going to work with that? Um, or have I done something a bit silly and it's going to override that? Um, so that's my uh, doubt uh, about what I've done. But anyone, I'm really interested to hear your feedback uh, on that. Uh, your knowledge is always appreciated. Uh, thanks very much. Cheers. Bye.